You'll be pleased to know that last night's apple crumble was excellent, with birds proper custard, none of this ready-made junk. But anyway, enough of the fun, now it's time to do some brakes. When I got this bike, it already had the upgraded calipers from the slightly later ZX-10s, because the original gold calipers that came on these bikes were not very good. And not only were they not very good with performance, they also corroded quite badly inside. So, these are decidedly better. But when I rode the bike, there wasn't that much bite with them, and I'd like them to be a little bit better. Especially because it may find its way onto a racetrack one day. So, there are a couple of bits I'm going to do. Even though the pads in the bike look okay, I'm going to put some EBC EPFAs on. These are the sort of fast road slash track day pad. So I know they're a good pad and they'll give me the initial bite I'm looking for. And while I'm there, I may as well bleed some new fluid through it. So there is now an RBF 700 available, which is incredibly high boiling point sort of race spec fluid. Might be a little bit overkill. I mean, it's brilliant, but... I still have some 660 left, so I'm actually going to put this in it, because it costs a little bit less. So, I'm going to bleed the brakes, fit new pads, and give the calipers a general clean. The first thing to do is to bleed them up, though, because then if I do spill any fluid down them, I'm not spilling fluid down new pads. Because I'm not fitting new lines or any new components, I'm literally just replacing the fluid that's in here with new. I've taken the top off there, so that I can pour new fluid in. And if we go down to the caliper, uh, I've just got a tube coming off the caliper into an old bottle. So, so I've cleared all the old fluid out of the reservoir. I pumped most of it through and then just soaked the last little bit up with a rag. So now we'll start putting the new fluid in. Nice and careful not to spill any fluid because it will strip paint, which we definitely don't want. And I do have some rag and some brake cleaner ready. So just in case we do spill the odd drop, we can clean it up straight away. So now the new fluid is in the reservoir, I just need to open the uh, caliper and I can just pump a load through. The last few pumps on each caliper, what I do is get some pressure on the mass cylinder, open the caliper up and just before the mass cylinder is sort of at the end of its stroke, I'll nip that back off. And what that means is I'm closing it off where there's still a little bit of pressure pushing out because when the mass gets to the end and we let go of it, it might try and pull a little bit of fluid back in, and so we don't want any of the old fluid or air or anything coming back into the caliper. So I'll do that for the last few pumps. There we go, and I'll just lock the caliper off, and we can move on to the other side. Now the caliper's bled, so we've got new fluid in everything, now it's time to take the caliper off one at a time, give them a good clean, put some new pads in it. Now I'm going to do this as if I'm putting the old pads back in, so you know you can see my routine. With the pad attached, uh, with the caliper attached, even it's easier to undo the pinch bolts that hold the uh, pads in because they're quite tight. Although if you do them too tight, you can crack the calipers. I'd only put the calipers on loose when I was uh, bleeding up. So what I do is I lay all the bits out in order on a piece of paper. Doesn't really matter with the bolts so much, but with the pads, you want them to go back in the same place they came out of, so they're already sort of bedded in that shape. There is actually quite a lot of spring tension from this plate, holding the pads in place and stopping everything sort of vibrating loose. On race bikes, I actually tend to take these out so the pads sort of aren't held by anything, so they're a little bit freer to move, but on a road bike, it stops everything rattling around as much. So, pad pin out, cover plate out, and then SPS brake pads out. Never been much of a fan of SPS, I much prefer, prefer a sort of heavier sintered um, EBC pad. But if I lay them out, inside pad, outside pad, on my piece of paper, then if I wanted to put it all back together, it would all be in the right place. So there we have the caliper stripped, and you can see this one's pretty clean, it's not bad at all. I think these have been quite well looked after, especially being the fact that we actually have nice stainless bolts and bits, but I'm still going to give them another clean and then put new pads in. 
So this is how I arrange something when I'm stripping a caliper down. So this is the sort of the top bolt, the, the top set of pads inside outside, bottom set inside outside, spring plates, the correct orientation so they're pointing up. And that way when you come to put it back together it's just easier. So to clean the calipers it's all fairly straightforward. I have a toothbrush and some brake cleaner and to push the pistons back in afterwards so they've got a little bit of lube against the dust seals, I use a little squirt of GT85. Some people will like to clean calipers with soapy water. It probably works perfectly well. I've just never been a fan of adding moisture into a system. No real need to. I find brake cleaner seems to work okay. One day I might actually test it and see what the difference is. So, I like to do a little pump on the lever just to make sure all the pistons are moving. Right, so I've just held some of the pistons a little bit uh, just so I can make sure all of them move so they're just pushed out a little bit from where they're normally seated. They're all fairly clean but I think we can give them a real good score and make them look like new. So a liberal amount of brake cleaner and a good scrub with a toothbrush and your calipers should end up looking lovely and clean. I like to just have a little bit of lubrication to slide the pistons back in. I have actually got some friends who actually use a little uh, dribble of brake fluid to do this because that is the fluid that the seals are used to having against them. I use a bit of GT85, both seem to work. This I suspect is more pleasant on your fingers. And then just one by one, nice and slowly, push the pistons back into the caliper. Now the pistons should move fairly easily by hand. If they don't, there's probably something wrong. Either the master cylinder's ever so slightly holding on, or your calipers and your bits aren't in very good condition. Last little clean up to get rid of any of the old dirt GT85 and bits because we don't want that on our braking surfaces. And it's time to pop the new pans in. Just a little smear of copper grease on your pad pins so then they don't seize in the caliper. So with the pad pins, just a bit of a nip because the spring plate's going to stop them basically vibrating out and you don't want to do them too tight and actually crack the caliper, which I have seen done before. That's it. Pads pulled apart and slipped back onto the disc. Right, last bit is to the calipers up. That's 34 newton meters for the calipers. If you want to torque the pinch bolts up, the pad pin bolts, they're 15 newton meters. So that's the calipers finished. New fluid, new pads, I've even cleaned the discs. There is one more thing I can do though. This RCS Brombo master cylinder that's come on the bike the joyous thing about these is you can adjust the lever ratio and basically that's just altering where the pivot point is. At the moment, because the bit at the top is black, I know that's on the 20mm ratio, which means it's 20mm from there to the pivot. That gives you what in effect feels like a nice firm hard lever, but actually gives you less braking pressure than the 18. So what I'm going to do is swap it back to the 18 because I prefer that. It tends to make the lever feel a little bit softer but you do tend to get more brake power. So, I just need to get my screwdriver in there, flick the little pivot round, and we'll have, hopefully, much better brakes. So that's the front end of the bike done. I've got Dunlop TT Sportsmart tyre, uh, I've got upgraded fork internals, which should be considerably better, I've made some brake improvements, and that's it, we're pretty good. So the next thing is to go down to the back but I may have to do a little bit of actual paint custom work in between. So join me again next time when we'll be doing the back end.